In this video, I'm going to give you my honest review of the Celebrity Beyond Cruise. Hey there, my name is Paul Von Felt, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not the Celebrity Beyond Cruise is worth it. Lisa and I recently went on the cruise and want to give you an honest review of what it was like so that you can make an informed decision about whether or not to go on it yourself. Today I want to do a quick review on how to pack for a cruise. So we're going to look at how you can pack for a cruise. Now you can use this for other things, but if you're going on a cruise specifically, this is how I go about making sure I don't leave anything at home. First thing I do is I look at how many nights we're sailing. So we're sailing on seven nights and I start off with my evening wear. There's going to be two what they call elegant chic nights. So that means kind of two dressy nights like you'd go to a nice restaurant and the others are all resort casual. So five resort casual, two elegant chic nights and here we go. So there are seven nights to the cruise. There's two of the elegant chic nights and then we're going to three special dinners which might at specialty restaurants which may be a little bit more dressy too. Nothing too extreme. I think of elegant chic as like depends on the cruise ship you're going on. The last one we went to was a, um, a celebrity and so I brought um, like much more elegant with a a little bit of a low heel sort of outfit. On this one, I think I'm gonna stay a little bit more casual, maybe like if I was going to a nice dinner here in Clearwater Beach where we live at, a, at a, one of our great restaurants. Now, I always tend to get cold on a boat, so I always bring a couple of neutral layering sweaters, um, one in black, one in white, so that everything, um, I can throw it on top of anything if I'm kind of cold on the ship. And it's kind of like being on an airplane. When I'm indoors, I can be very cold and having dinner on the ship, so I like to have layers I can throw on. So you can wear dressy pants, but um, so far we've seen that like nice jeans work really well for the guys. Paul likes them, he's comfortable. He wears his other pants a lot for work, so we're just going with uh, blue jeans and black jeans and then shirts that match. Long sleeve for the dressier um, nights and then just a shorter sleeve. Um, if he wanted to, he could also take a sport coat to throw on for the um, a little bit more dressier nights and some guys do and some guys don't, so it works out either way. Now, I like dresses for my resort casual because they're just easy to pack, they don't wrinkle, they're easy to throw on. So that's kind of my go-to on dinner attire, simple. So after you figured out what you're wearing, now's the time to match up your shoes to your outfit so you make sure you don't leave any of them at home. The boat we're going on is really big, so I'm really taking flat shoes this time and not taking heels that I'll sometimes take on vacation because um, I think we're gonna be doing a lot of walking and I like to be comfortable. Okay, once you've got your evening wear figured out, then the next thing I do is I go to um, like the day wear. So what are we doing during the different days? Sometimes we're gonna be swimming and usually, you know, swimsuits and um, um, like something to throw on to go get breakfast or whatever. So that's the next set. So same deal, seven days. Let's so go. Here we go. So we've got underwear and bras for me. Check. Check. Like 11 days, right? Swimsuits. Check. Swimsuit. Check. Flip flops. Check. Check. Good. Swim t-shirts for your swimsuits. Cover up for my swimsuits. Check. Check. We've got workout gear. Shorts. Check. T-shirts. Check. Socks. Check. Sports bra. Check. Okay, good. Then we've got our day wear. Check. Check. And our evening wear. Check. And, and, and we know, and our dog. And our dog Check. who wants to go with us, who never likes it when we pack. Are you? you get to go no no okay so we got everything packed now we just got to do the toiletries and we're, we're set to go so when I pack the toiletries I usually take four bags so one of them is uh, stuff for my jewelry I don't really take my expensive jewelry when I go on a trip because I just don't want to get it lost or uh, we went on the waterfalls last time and they told everybody not to wear their watches and some people decided to wear them anyway and two people lost their watches when they took the plunge and went into the waterfall so I usually just don't take good jewelry but I have a bag for my jewelry so that I know it's there the next thing we do is I always just keep a bag packed of anything like we need as far as band-aids for my feet in case my shoes 
um, feel rough, if I need eye drops. One of my favorite things to always, always make sure I include is Spanish black radish because if you eat something that's a little bit off and you feel a little bit sick, this takes care of it right away. Paul and I each have our own separate toiletry bags. We like these little ones that have the hook because when you get there, you can just hang them up and then you've got everything in there. Um, shave cream and um, important stuff but like so he's got his and again we just keep one bag packed so when we're ready to go it's got everything in it we don't have to be like oh did we forget this or forget that it makes it simple and with mine um, same thing but one of the things that I sometimes like to pack um, because they don't have it is like a little makeup mirror so especially on cruise ships I like the bigger makeup mirror so I can see better and they don't have them so those I always leave in here too and then don't forget sunscreens. You need to always have sunscreens with you. This is my face sunscreen, but we also have sunscreens that we've got um, for the, um, for the, when we're sitting outside. And then finally, as a part of this one, I always also have all my little hair clips and hair ties and things that I want to have and throw my hair up in there also in a bag that I keep there. So it kind of has double of everything, but we travel so much, that's just the way I like to do it and it keeps it really simple. If you don't, just make a list of what you need and then every time you fill your bag up, just make sure you check it off. So that's it. It looks like a lot. But it's not really. Well, it's a seven-day cruise. You'll see another thing. It's a seven-day cruise. So we have to And have that is the way you pack for a cruise to make sure you do not forget anything. And of course, don't forget your hats and sunglasses. I have one for sun. I have one for like working out. And then I just bring cheap clip sunglasses in case I lose them. Paul brings expensive ones. I have one? Oh, no, I have another pair of sunglasses. Oh, okay. It's in my uh, backpack. So. Right. Backpack with camera stuff. And we're now ready. And we're now ready. <laughs> And we're now ready for a vacation. Now we're ready. Now we're ready. Let's go. Right. Okay, hi everybody. Welcome to our cruise. This is the celebrity. What you guys don't know is Paul can't remember the name of any place we go. I remember we everything. Right? No, he doesn't. Everything. So, so we're going to try this again. Hey, hi everyone. We're on the Celebrity Beyond. The Beyond. This is a Beyond ship. Very cool so far. This is our cabin. And we can't wait to show you more of the ship. Yeah, king size bed. And um, that view. With the balcony, beautiful. porthole view out there, and it's super exciting. I'm missing a button because oh, last cruise no, I was okay. fat, but this cruise I got slim <laughs> nice. because I was running more. Nice job. <laughs> I'm working on that. I need to run more than No, no, no. Oh, wait a minute. So I see what they did is they took the oxtail meats and they put it all together in a it's not in a terrain. Yeah. <laughs> The Celebrity Cruise is an amazing experience. From the moment we stepped onto the ship, we were in awe and grandeur. The staff and crew were incredibly friendly and accommodating and went out of their way to make sure our stay was enjoyable. The Beyond is one of the newest ships and part of the all-new Edge Class cruise ships, built in France and launched April of 2021. The ship is 1,071 feet from stern to bow. It has 21 decks and rises an amazing 190 feet in height, while having only a draft of 28 feet below the surface of the water. She holds 2,260 passengers and 1,400 crew members, making the staff to guest ratio almost one crew member to each guest. The staterooms have changed a bit on this ship and others as well with a bit more sophistication and room to move. In the olden days, the standard staterooms were very small, mostly with a bed and a small closet, and maybe some drawers to put your socks and underwear in. And the bathrooms had just enough room to get business taken care of. Now they are probably twice that size, and you can actually reach your feet when bending over in the shower. 
In addition to that, you and your other half can brush your teeth without taking turns in the bathroom. We found the bed to be very comfortable and the pillows nice and soft. Besides that, if the pillow is not to your liking, the steward will bring you another, harder or softer. The balconies are a little different on the Beyond. Our room's balcony only had a portal type opening, but most of the balcony rooms have a full opening. The difference being, they are more part of the room and don't have the full outdoor experience the regular balcony rooms have. They do feel a little more private though. The magic carpet is a fun added feature to the Beyond. It's a bar that actually hangs over the side of the ship and moves from deck to deck throughout the cruise. Here you can get your favorite drink as you float over the water with one of the best views on the boat. The area they call the garden is a nice place to hang out on the ship. The Packers were playing the first night we were aboard and they were showing the game on the big screen that is located here. They also show big screen movies here during the cruise. So you can enjoy a movie under the stars while sailing through the Caribbean and sipping on your favorite cocktail. As with all cruises, the Beyond has a very nice fitness center on board with great views while you work off that last big meal. They have all the machines you would expect in any good gym. In addition to that, they also offer a few Pilates and yoga classes throughout the day. It's worth talking about some of the drink packages that are available during your cruise. The Beyond offers a few different packages to choose from. As for the alcoholic drinks, you can buy a regular all-you-could-drink package, and then they offer another one for a bit more, and it includes top-shelf drinks as well. If you decide to buy a drink package, make sure you do so in advance, as the prices go up substantially once on board the ship. As for Lisa and I, we have never been able to make the drink package worth the while, as we don't drink enough to make it worth the price. You would have to drink at least eight drinks per day per person to make up the value. Also, as a note, if you choose to buy the drink package, each adult staying in your cabin must also buy the same package. We didn't do much research on the soft drink packages, but a lot of people buy them. We did, however, find the coffee package worth the money. We like to have a coffee drink every morning and the coffee package comes with a specialty coffee each day at a discounted price. Each day, your room steward will deliver the next day's activity sheet to your stateroom. You can use this to plan out your next day, but we prefer to use the onboard app they give you to plan each day. Whether you use the paper or the app, we recommend planning the day so you don't miss out on an activity you want to do, as there is always lots of fun things going on. Cruises are also a good place to step outside the box and try something you wouldn't normally do at home. Keep going. Cruises are a great place to get professional photos of you and your family with no obligation to buy any of them. You can have as many photo shoots done as you like, so make sure you bring your Sunday best and take advantage of this great service. Even if you're not in the market for family photos, seeing the different and sometimes funny shots the professional photographers can capture on your vacation is fun. Now Lisa, how are you? Big top. Look at each other. Now both with your right arm behind Lisa. And Lisa, go from the table. Okay. And big top. Kiss your cheek. Kiss his cheek. Big top. Now kiss each other. And big top. And one more. And look at each other. And kiss each other. Oh, that's the whole of the ship. Is that the actual outside? Yeah. And then if you want to, if you want to <gasps> like go down. Whoa, there, how far does it go? Like a long ways. Wow. Okay. Wow, that is really wild. There's, that's wild. Like no safety nets. No. So if you go down there, you 
go in here. Don't go in there. Don't go in there, Paul. Don't go in there. Or don't go in there. Don't go in there. <laughs> okay, you're funny. Lots of history on this boat. And this, and they actually have artifacts that were recovered from some ships. And I believe he said that this is actually armor that was recovered from one of the sunken ships. But you can see this is armor. Like, uh, who is armor? Spanish, probably. Wow, that's very Chinese cool. Chinese, maybe? But yeah, it's armor. I did not write this, okay? She goes, you know who you look like? I go, who? She goes, Obama. <laughs> exactly. They booked it. They booked it during um, um, Oktoberfest. So we went to we went to Oktoberfest. Munich for Oktoberfest. It was a real Oktoberfest. <laughs> a real Oktoberfest, which you know, just for one night because we were in town for one night. Yeah, but we side tripped on that. Oh, that they was weren't going to take trip. us to Neuschwanstein. Neuschwanstein. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't going to take us, so we jumped off the tour for a day. They're like, "What are you doing?" We're like, "We're going to see this." Yeah, it was. That was very cool. But we were in the Italian lake towns and they took us on a boat over to a little restaurant in a little hill town that you drove to by boat and we all got off. And went, yeah. Or the song. Or the moon. Oh, that looks wonderful. Thank you.
Alright, You're in the clear. <laughs> Alright, but I'll make my life easier. <laughs> Cheers. I love you. I love you too. Thank you. Oh, what'd you get? They had creme brulee? Creme brulee. Creme brulee. They didn't have it last night. They have it now. Right. Oh, it's my favorite. Oh, That's nice. good. Yeah. And then this creme brulee thing. Tonight. Can we get one to go? Sure. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I love oh, that. Are you guys headed to the show? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to go to that too. I want to get away, I want to find a way, yeah. I use these waterworks, but I can't bring myself to swim. Wildly Beyond has many different itineraries through the year. Ours left out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, making its first stop in St. Martin after being at sea for two days. There we boarded the Stars and Stripes Regatta Racing Sailboat. More about that later. Okay, just got off the boat, everyone. We're in St. Martin, Saint Martin. Our first stop. Yep, we're gonna, and we're gonna go do the regatta. No, the America's Cup. We're the gonna regatta, go race America's, America's Cup. Cup. I'm That's excited right. about that. On the that. regatta. All right. Okay. See you soon. Bye. Oh, we get a Pandora, but now um, uh, Holly's no longer a Pandora. That originally did most of the work in the 1987 America's Cup, winning at that point. Now, second off, I have Canada 2. Now, Canada 2 is one of the lightest wind boats in our fleet. Based on the, we the weather conditions today, both of them are equally at speed. Now, I also need to split you guys out in the team because I have two boats. Now, also, I need to team captain. Two legends, I gotta say. I'm gonna have you as my team captain. Okay. Whoa! <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna have you right over here, bro. Yeah. Right over here for me. Oh, you, you're you gonna know in a few minutes. Uh, don't worry about it.
North side all the way from Jamaica. Getting the Miller Miller and Port. And if you missed it, my name is Morgan. I'm also from Jamaica, but me. <laughs> Alright, um, boys and girls, we are on a racing boat here, guys. When we start to race, a couple of things will move around. We are going to find those things out to you, so please, I just need your attention for about five minutes so we can keep everybody nice and safe, okay? Um, Akila, we're gonna start up front. I see those people are holding us. That thing. Oh yes, so consider new people that are sitting up front. Those four cars will be moving back and forth and semi with the whole weight of this main set. So do yourself a favor, do not move that front of the handrail. Do not pop the bottom of the set back, okay? Do not move back. So please stay away from these four cars, which is all of these back, okay? Um, we have the primary grinding handle up in the front and the main are uh, right here in the middle. Those handles will be turning fast and furious during the race. When you grind it, if you drop it, that's fantastic drink, etc. Do not bend out immediately. Take it out. Just imagine those handles are turning when you bend down. We have to let you about the race after the race. Okay? On the starboard side, they like to have two black lines in his hands on the port side. It's a heel. They have two black lines. Guys, follow those lines carefully to the front. They attach to the front sail. The front sail is called the jib. So those lines are called with the cheeks. Just before the race starts, we are going to open that jib. And um, every time we do the turns, it's called packing. Those jib sheets will be racing back and forth about 40 to about 60 miles per hour. We're ready. Are we sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We need to two beers. No, listen to beers. We need more beers. You gotta finish your beer. No pop. No pop. No pop. No pop. No pop. We need some beer. Drive in, guys. Um, Alan, give me a couple of feet out there. Stop for me, Alan. Leave the drip there. That's fine. So, Alan, you're controlling this one right yes. here. You can lock it off now, sir. Get it, get it on the board there, please. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're heading towards the race course. Um, so Dylan is going to explain the race course so everybody have an idea what we're doing, okay? This race course that we have for you guys today was painted by a kid. There you go. Nice. Very nice. But also ruined by a kill. A kill cannot do two things at once. So guys, be careful when you guys speak to a kill, okay? Speak slowly. Thank you very much. So as you can see, this arrow points in open direction. Or can you tell me when it's going to jump? Look at that beautiful American flag.
If you are into great meals, I suggest doing the food upgrade. Whereas the food in the main dining room is still amazing, the specialized restaurants are over the top and well worth the extra money you will spend on them. The Beyond offers a great selection of restaurants, from the main dining rooms to the many specialty restaurants. You can opt for a tailored sit-down service restaurant or choose one of their buffet-style places. We found all of these places to be very good, and you get your money's worth in terms of quality and quantity. We tried as many restaurants as we could on the seven-day cruise we are on and found all of them to be great. There are four main dining rooms on the ship that offer four different dining experiences that are all included in your cruise. Every night the specialty menu changes, but all four have the same standard menu as well. As an inside secret, if you find something you like in one of the four dining rooms and you are eating at one that does not serve that same dish you want, your waiter will be happy to bring that dish from the other restaurant. I suggest you go bold and try new things while cruising. If you order something you decide it's just not for you, your waiter again will be more than happy to replace it with a different selection. So knock yourself out and order something new and exciting. If great food is your thing, then the specialty restaurant package is well worth the additional charge. For an additional $50 or so, you can experience a meal that would cost you well into the hundreds anywhere else. Make sure you book your dinner package before getting on the ship for the best deals. If the buffet is more your style, then a cruise is a place for you. The Beyond had one of the most impressive buffets I've ever seen. There is absolutely something for everyone. The Cypress Restaurant is one of the four main dining rooms that are part of the cruise, so there is no additional charge to eat here. The theme is Greek, but they still offer some non-Greek dishes that are standard in all four dining halls. To start your dinner off, your waiter will bring you a nice selection of bread with an assortment of flavored kinds of butter. I always enjoy a dinner better when they pay attention to the details, like gourmet kinds of butter, rather than the pads of butter that come individually wrapped. Just like a high-end restaurant, our waiter was very attentive and brought us a variety of Greek appetizers begin our meal. These were a sample of typical Greek favorites like stuffed grape leaves or dolmas, mini pitas, some anchovies, some marinated olives with feta cheese, and a variety of sauces to dip in. For the next course, Lisa had a Greek salad and I had the sanaki. It turns out you can't have open flames on a ship so my cheese was not on fire, but it was still delish. For the main course, Lisa tried the pasta dish that was similar to fettuccine alfredo, but Greek style. I had the lamb shank that I found very good, and it was a favorite among the passengers we talked to on the cruise as well. For dessert, we shared a fruit top creme brulee and bananas fosters. They were both presented very well and tasted amazing. Overall, our experience at the Cypress restaurant was great, and we really enjoyed the service and a five-star four-course meal. The Normandy restaurant is also one of the four main dining rooms that are part of the cruise, so there is no additional charge to eat here. The theme is Normandy French cuisine, but they still offer the same standard dishes they call the classics for all four main dining halls, which include a chicken dish, a beef dish, and a salmon dish. As with all the ship restaurants, they start you off with an assortment of breads and flavored butter. If you like wine with your dinner, it's a good idea to order a bottle, and if you don't drink the entire bottle, they will put the cork back in it and save it for your next dinner. If you plan to dine at a different restaurant, you could always take the bottle back to the room with you and take it to your next dinner. Your dinner, of course, starts out with an appetizer. Lisa had the scallop dish. Not sure that happened, as she is not really fond of scallop. We never order the same dish because we want to show you as many of the selections as possible when we are reviewing a restaurant. I had the baked brie appetizer and thought both appetizers were very good, although I preferred the baked brie over the scallop dish. For our main course, Lisa had ravioli, and mine was Chateaubriand, which was a beef tenderloin wrapped in a pastry and garnished with beef. We topped off our dinner with a nice creme brulee and a wonderful fruit pastry dish. The Normandy restaurant was fine dining, and we really enjoyed the food. The service was also excellent, very attentive, and friendly. The Tuscan restaurant is another one of the four main dining rooms that are part of the cruise, so there is no charge to eat here. The theme is Italian with dishes like homemade pasta and other familiar Italian dishes. They start you off with an assortment of bread and flavored butter again. For our 
appetizer. I chose the roasted pumpkin salad and Lisa had the eggplant bruschetta. Both were very good, although both of us thought the pumpkin salad was better. For main course, Lisa chose another cheesy pasta dish and I went for the bone-in pork chop, which was very tender and tasty. I think all the pastas are homemade, so we found it hard to go wrong ordering pasta dishes. The desserts here are always wonderful as well, with offerings like tiramisu and creme brulee. We ordered something we had never heard of before, just because we always like discovering new things when eating out. Overall, the Tuscan is a great place to have dinner while on board the Celebrity Beyond Cruise. The service is attentive and friendly, and the food is definitely worth checking out if you're looking for a good Italian meal. The Cosmopolitan Restaurant is the last of the four main dining rooms that are part of the cruise. So of course, there is no additional charge to eat here. The theme of this restaurant is eclectic and offers a mix of dishes from around the world. When we arrived at the restaurant, they've started us off with an assortment of breads and flavored butter, just like the other three. For our appetizers, Lisa chose the French onion soup, which is on the classic menu, and I had the escargot that is also on the classic menu. Both are a specialty of the cruise line. And for our main courses, Lisa went with the pan-seared black cod, while I opted for the oxtail dinner. The oxtail was not really oxtail, but it was in the correct shape. It was more like braised beef rolled into a cylinder shape. It was however really good. Lisa wasn't really fond of the cod but the good news is if you don't like something the wait staff will be more than happy to bring you an alternative dish. You just need to ask. The desserts here are also really good with offerings like cheesecake and apple pie a la mode. We decided to try the tiramisu and their signature carrot cake. Both were amazing. Overall the Cosmopolitan restaurant is definitely worth checking out while on board the celebrity cruise. The food was excellent and as always the service was attentive and friendly. Highly recommended. The Eden Cafe is a casual dining option located at the back of the ship just above the Eden restaurant of which we will get to later. We found this to be an amazing hidden gem on the cruise. Not a lot of people knew about it, so it was a wonderful place to get lunch without fighting the crowds at the buffet line. They serve gourmet sandwiches, soup, and salads that were over the top delicious. I recommend checking this place out at least once during your cruise aboard the Beyond. All right, here we are. We're going to eat the long sought after Eden. Yes, long it's, sought after Eden. Here's the interesting thing is everybody wants to go to Eden. We heard from several different people on this cruise that have tried to get to this restaurant. It took us a little bit to get here, right? Yeah, and they couldn't get reservations. So I'm excited tonight. We're eating at Eden and it's supposed to be a culinary, visual, extraordinary for all the senses type of dinner. So, so let's see what it really so let's is. Let's see what it is. Let's let's go to Eden. Wanna go to Eden? Yeah let's go to Eden. Let's go to Eden. <laughs> When you don't want to take the time for a sit down meal or want to see the food you're getting, then the Ocean View Cafe is for you. The Ocean View Cafe is a huge buffet that has just about everything your heart desires. They have a wide selection of food that ranges from pizza to burgers to Asian stir fry, Mexican dishes, and more. The desserts here are great as well, with several ice cream flavors available every day. Everything you eat, right down to the bread, is handmade right on the ship every day, so you know you're getting the freshest food available every time you eat.
Here we are in St. Thomas. Thomas, so excited. Beautiful day, sun shining. We're going diving. Diving. Diving.
In this video, we will also show you some clips of incredible shows we got to see while aboard the Beyond, along with some fun activities that were available while cruising. Speaking of activities, if you're cruising with children, Celebrity is likely not your cruise line. While children are allowed on the ship, there are not as many activities for them as there are on other cruise lines, such as Carnival or Royal Caribbean. We had the most fun at the Silent Disco. Here, you are fitted up with your own headphones that play up to three different channels. Each channel has its own DJ that are all playing to get the most people dancing to their beat. You will see who's winning popularity by the light color that is on each of the headsets that people are wearing. This was an impossible, and when I tell you who she said, you will realize I did not write this, okay? She goes, you know who you look like? I go, who? She goes, Obama. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. They're going back. Porta Plata in the Dominican Republic. There we had an amazing adventure four-wheeling through the backcountry of the DR and then jumping into the Blue Hole and sliding down natural waterfalls. Stay tuned to see our amazing adventure. Here we are, just reached the Dominican Republic, noisy here.
Yeah. What's the national park? Stay paid.
Overall, the Celebrity Cruise was one of my best experiences ever, and I highly recommend it. From the staff to the amenities, to all the great activities at Ports of Call, this experience is definitely worth it. If you're looking for an unforgettable journey at sea, then look no further than the Celebrity Beyond Cruise. You won't regret it. Okay. This so here we are, we're leaving the Celebrity Beyond. Sad to see the end of our trip. It was a great one. We will definitely be back on Celebrity. We give it 12 thumbs up. I have a favorite crew so far. Yeah. It's been very good. Awesome. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my